Hello, hello, you know I like to sing that song, Welcome Back, but I'm not going to do it today, Sergio. You may recognize this guy. Sergio's well, joined me on a lot of videos talking about Nakamura, and we're both here at Gym Toff today talking about Nakamura in Tokyo, Japan. I just saw this guy in Arizona, so we wanted to give you a quick booth tour on some of the existing technology from Nakamura that you may already know, as well as some world releases that are only here right yes. now, Sergio. Yes, absolutely. I mean, beautiful booth. Nakamura always put up a nice show, beautiful show. It has nice seeing you again. It was not that long ago that we were together in Arizona. You're my Brazilian brother, my yeah. friend. And then we're bringing all of the world into one place. So with that being said, let's take a walk. Let's look at some of these machines. We're not going to interrupt the sales that's going on. We never want to do yeah. that. But Sergio, would you mind talking about the WT-252 right here? Yeah, so this is, I mean, one of the, uh, this machine has been around for, for a while. Obviously, it's been updated. It's a really good seller for us in North America. Twin turret, Y-axis, multitasking. You know, Nakamura is the, the pioneer of multitasking in the world, and they are the, the premier multitasking machines, and all the different models you see here, they all multitasking, milling, Y-axis. So that's what our expertise, that's what they focus on. Yeah, and there's gonna be different sizes for each one, and we're Absolutely. gonna continue walking as we do this. What I'd like to you convey, Sergio, if you can, as we're walking around, uh, there might be an audience out there that while we know Nakamura, maybe they don't know why I want this machine or what part of the industry for another machine, or is it just about real estate in my factory versus part size that I'm gonna be machining. So let's talk about when we're at each machine going, hey guys, for those of you who are looking, this is the machine you'll want if you're working on whatever projects it might be. Help them understand, okay, there's a lot of machines out there. Yeah. We know that they're the leaders in multitasking, but which one do I go with? How do I clarify that? That is a great point, Tony. I mean, it, 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 there's several industries, right? Automotive, medical, aerospace, uh, job shops. You know, every model has a better, a better fit for some of the industries. For example, this one here, the NTJ100, that is our, our really a medical machine for us. Hip cups, stems, uh, very use, you know, uh, bone nails. It is definitely one of those medical machines, medical platforms where some of the others are more on the automotive or aerospace or other industries, but um, on the NTJ, it would be a, a great medical machine. NTY3, it's a, that's our next machine on the portfolio here. Three turret machine that Nakamura has been making for over 20 years. Different sizes from two inch bar capacity all the way up to three inch bar capacity. Uh, this machine is a very flexible. It can be used in a lot of different industries. We have these on automotive shops, we have them on aerospace shops. I have customers that are making 150 different part numbers with five minutes or less setups on these. So it's it, it's a very flexible machine, the 3 turret platform. So I want to talk about this, but I want to just quickly clarify, when we're looking at the NTJ100, you said medical, 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 right? Yes. Is that yes. based on the footprint, the precision, the size of part capacity that can go in there? No. Why medical? Actually, if you look at this machine configuration, it's very unique. You have a turret that is a B-axis turret. It rotates 182 degrees. It's programmable 182,000 points. So, for example, on hip cups, they have angle holes at all different angles. So if you don't have the capability of indexing that turret to the, to the angle that you need, you need a special holder, a special angle holder in order to drill those holes. Or you need a B-axis machine. Um, where you have a tool changer, but a lot of times in the hip cups, you don't need a lot of tools, but you need faster cycle time because there is a lot of hips that are needed these days, right? So that's the, that's the main purpose of this machine. And again, with the B-axis rotation, programmable, it, it fits that, that, that industry really well. Yeah, thank you for clarifying that. And it was actually perfect timing for it to spin right as you were talking it was, about it for it the was. audience perfect. to see as well. Now, this is a gantry unit. Um, we're talking about flexibility here. You use that adjective several times when yes. talking about the flexibility of this machine. If we look inside the machine, three turrets. You don't yes. always see three turrets. Let's talk about the differences in flexibility, what this two machine can offer for the audience. Yes, it, the three turret machine, three Y-axis, all, all turrets are with milling capability. A lot of people think and look at this machine as, okay, this is a cycle time machine, right? Because you can actually put three tools in a cut. But it's not only that. It is also number of tools. As I was mentioning, you know, customers that make, you know, high mix, low volume application, um, 
where they need changeover quickly, especially in the aerospace industry, mm -hmm. they want tools. The more tools, the better. So if you have, and, and, and all Nakamura machines are equipped also with the half index capability on a turret. So you could have 24 tools per turret. Wow. So, like I said, there's many customers that change over time is very important. Yeah. So they have to make five, six, ten pieces, not 10,000, right? So it doesn't pay to be setting up a machine for eight hours. You want it to be done in five minutes, get five parts done, and move on to the next job. So this is, you know, that's what I mean by flexibility of the three tour is, yes, you can have a lot faster cycle time because you can put three tools in a cut or you can have just number of tools for minimizing changeover and not being able to change tools. I'm sure the audience by now can see why I brought you along for this booth tour. You yes. know all the answers, absolutely loving it, educating me, educating the audience. Is it worth highlighting the speed of this gantry unit? I'm seeing it yes. zip by every single time. Yes, absolutely. So this is our GR203 gantry. So it's a five, five kilogram gantry capacity, three axes. So again, you know, if you're looking, this machine can be bar fed, obviously it can be gantry fed too, right? Or you can have both. I was gonna ask that question, you beat me to it. Yeah, so you can have that gantry, this gantry here is mounted on the left side of the machine. You can move this gantry to the right side. Now you can do the load and unload on the, on the right side of the machine in addition to having a bar feeder. So if your parts are bigger than the bar capacity of the machine, you can run it with a gantry. So again, ultimate flexibility, uh, you're not stuck just by the diameter of bars that you can load through the spindle. You can go up to, I believe in this machine, is four and a quarter inch diameter for the gantry and five kilograms, about 11 pounds. You are a pro at this. Let's take a walk, Sergio. Thank you so much for explaining that to the audience. As you said, ultimate flexibility. I like that. Now, as we're walking through this area, is it worth noting any of the things that are around us or should we head just to the next machine? We can, there is there's a few things here. Nakamura spends a lot of time on software technology, mm -hmm. right? So you can see simulation software. They can, you know, you can see the smart, smart sign, which is a, you know, factory interface with the machines. You can see which machines are running, uh, which machines are, are, are waiting for a setup. Mm -hmm. uh, so Nakamura focus a lot into software that again, everything that you see here is included with the smart X control on a, on a Nakamura machine. So they keep, every year they keep developing new and new and new software, making the machine more easier friendly to use, right? So, so, so the operator can, again, set up jobs quickly, get the machine up and running quickly. Um, you know, it's a global market. So we, in order to keep jobs in the US, we have to be a lot more productive. So again, everything you see here in the software side is all, everything is included with the, with, with the machine. With, with the control that they offer. Yeah, let's take a walk on to the next area. But as you mentioned, it doesn't pay to make six parts in eight hours, right? And this, no. the control of it and everything that's included with the Nakamura machines is a piece of competing on a global level to yes. make sure we're doing everything quickly. And we've said this word a bunch of times, but I think it's worth saying again, right? Flexibility, which I physically have none of, yeah. but these machines <laughs> have a ton of, right? So, yes. all right, we have, looks like, uh, a separate unit here. Let's talk about what's going on. Looks like some sort of conveyor unit, it's an automated cell. Yeah, is this, this is an attachment? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So this is an attach attachment that they offer. They call it a Hako Bay system. It's a tray system, so you can, you know, you load blanks into a tray, and then you interface this along with the uh, a robot, or you interface this with a gan under a gantry, under the gantry of the machine. So this is your in-feed and out-feed conveyor system. In this case, it's more of a palletizing system that Nakamura built for, for, the, for all the machines that you see here. I think that's mostly self-explanatory for the audience. If you want to know more, you know how to get in touch with Sergio yes, and I Methods so. and Nakamura as well, yes. right? All right, we have a big crowd here. You can see it's getting busier and busier yeah, on this booth. Yes. And the doors only just open. That's yes. the popularity yes. of Nakamura. Yes. So let's talk about this machine that everyone here is fascinated with. Yes. So that's the NTRX 300. So this, this has been a really fantastic model for us. Very extremely accurate machine. Um, as you can see there in the control, uh, the, the, uh, it's very graphic base. Uh, there is a Fennec 31i 5-axis control running on the background. And the operator interface is Nakamura interface. And they added those, you know, all kinds of software in there is included with, the, with that PC base, obviously, interface. Again, very graphic base. What they're showing now is what they call a digital chuck interlock. So you can program the position of your chuck actuator. 
so you don't have proximity switches anymore. Everything is done on a, a digital linear scale that's mounted in the back of the spindle. So again, for quick changeover, flexibility, productivity, and that's all the, the name evities, of the game. right? All yep. the evidence. It's the name you of the know, game. Back today. in the day, back in the ancient days when I was programming turning machines, I had to reset my proximity <laughs> switches all the time. <laughs> I know. So yes. now I'm learning that we don't have to do that you anymore. Don't, you don't. As you we don't. turn around here to talk about this machine, Sergio, I want to kind of bring up a word that I'm starting to it's a common theme that you keep saying and that's included. Included, yes. included, included. Yes. How many times do we hear, here's your machine, but yes. here's what you have to buy in excess yes. of what's going on. You keep saying included. That's a good thing to know. It is, because you know the way we, we package the, the machines from the factory, from Nakamura, is that most of the options are included with the machine. The only things that you add, we added in US for our customers would be you know, uh, high pressure cooling system, chip conveyors, you know, their accessories that are probably better to get, you know, live tooling, that's probably better to get locally. But we pretty much bring the machines fully, uh, full with options, so we don't have to add options in the U.S. And to be honest, we don't have to nickel and dime customers for every little thing, right? So, um, and, and again, Nakamura helps by, you know, working with us and building a lot of these systems standard so we don't have to keep adding options all the time. Yeah, important to note. So let's talk about automation. I think Fanic, you know, Fanic, you guys tricked me one time because I'm used to seeing yellow, and then your Cobot showed up and it's white, and I'm going, oh my gosh, okay, this is still <laughs> Fanic. So let's talk briefly about automation. We know it's important. This is a Cobot setup here. Looks like we have a plug one. Is this also this whole thing from Nakamura minus the, the Fanic Cobot? M minus the Fanic Robot. So this is a stock, stocker table, 10 station stocker table. Operator open the door, loads up the uh, the tray system here, walks away, and of course, you know the the robot does all the load and unload, air blow. Um, I mean, again, you know, lights out, lights off, lights off operation, mm -hmm. right? So, as you know, we we've been working with methods for for a while. We do a lot of automation over in Sudbury, in U.S., and Nakamura does help us a lot with the interface. Most of the time, we use what they call Ethernet IP which is basically you plug in a cable to the control and the robot is communicating with the machine. So all that, you know, again, we build a lot into those systems into the machine. So when you automate, it's just a matter of turning on Ethernet IP and program your robot. Making it easy for everybody right now. Yep. We're going to take a step over here. I'm not sure how good you are at skipping, but I kind of want to skip all right, only all right. because this is the world premiere of this machine. And to my knowledge, not quite being sold yet in the U.S., but coming soon right. through methods. Yes. Yeah, so this is a the, uh, they, the SC200 machine has been around for a while, but um, what they did is they, they updated the machine. They redesigned the machine, uh, made the machine more compact, but also give more swing, more, more more RPM, more, 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 and more than what we need, right? So they are always updating machines. They're always redesigning machines just because a machine, it's a great machine for 25 years, it needs to be updated, right? So uh, this is the latest in, in technology from Nakamura. Uh, they just introduced it here for the first time. We look forward to possibly bringing this machine to the U.S. market. Yeah, we look forward to sharing that information as well. For those of you watching right now, we're not going into great detail on each machine, just enough to get you guys intrigued, but we did record a really wonderful video with uh, Jundi and Shogo about this machine and the final machine we're gonna talk about right now. If you wanna know more details about it, Sergio, let's head this way. This is where we're gonna end our booth tour. This is the largest machine on the booth. Yes. And from my familiarity, the largest machine that they might do because I don't normally think of them as being so big. I saw something in your eye. There is a bigger one, isn't there? There is a bigger one. So, <laughs> so this is not the biggest one they make. So this is the little brother of the JX250 machine. So they introduced it to the JX250 two years ago. Um, has been a very successful model in the U.S. Uh, we sold a number of those to aerospace people, um, BXs, very large capacity, a lot of horsepower, uh, but the JX250 has, what, 1,850 millimeter different distance between spindles, so it's a pretty big machine. Um, so we needed something in between, right, because we have the MX100, we have the JX250, and we don't have anything in between, so they, this year they introduced the JX200. I'd like to talk real quick, now again, as we mentioned, 
Shogo and I talked about this machine in detail so that you can learn more, but there's one point that I'd love to reiterate if it's okay with you, yes. Sergio, and that's this smart cube yes. head. I think that's important to talk more about, right? Absolutely, so on a B-axis machine, the size of that spindle makes a big difference because when you get that spindle on a horizontal plane, in between the two turning spindles, you can run out of real estate real quick if that spindle is really long, right? So that's been a focus of Nakamura in reducing the size of the spindle. In this case, the smaller is better, but because um, um, you're trying to get, because if, you, if your spindle is, is too big in this, in this case, you, you can't put two tools in a cup, right? right? So the idea here is to keep the spindle as small as possible, as still as rigid as possible, but you still, you, you can use the entire uh, uh, real estate of the machine to be able to do, in this case, two tools in the cut, upper spindle, lower turret. In the case of the JX250, you can actually have three tools in the cut because you have a twin lower turret and the upper spindle. Um, and again, that spindle being shorter gives you a lot of flexibility to get that spindle in center, horizontal, and still be able to get two turrets in there and do work. Very well said. I'm going to give you a moment for a closing statement in just a second. As we've finished up our booth tour now and everyone who's watching, I hope you've learned as much as I have. Sergio, any closing statements you want to say either from Nakamura's side of things or from the method side of things as we conclude this video? Well, I mean, methods in Nakamura, that's a long history, right? So we've been the import, the exclusive importer of Nakamura for the United States for, all, for more than 40 years. So there is a lot of tribal knowledge and methods. Nakamura has been a fantastic partner. Uh, we always have engineers at Methods from Nakamura. They provide us the support, training that we need, especially on new platform machines. So it is a fantastic relationship and I'm really happy to be part of it. I'm really happy to be a part of this conversation and share it with the audience. For those of you watching, Thank you all for watching. We do appreciate you. Shogo, Junde, we appreciate you having us into the booth and allowing Sergio and I to talk more about your technology and share it with the audience around the world that tunes in to MTD. One last time, thank you so much, Sergio. Thank you, Tony. And thank you all for watching. We'll see you again soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.